Finding the right expression is so, so super important for any character portrait, I find. I spend far too much time looking at what is the correct expression, what's the perfect expression for a portrait, because I feel it's like a make or break of a good character portrait. The bland expression of the default Genesis figure really is a dead giveaway that this is a 3D character. If we want to make that believable, it needs to be something that isn't that. But at the same time, we don't want to go overboard and overdo it, as there has to be a certain amount of subtlety in there. And I find that really, really difficult. And I don't know, maybe you feel the same way. So let me share with you the tips of dialing in the correct expression with a magic tool called Puppeteer. We've already seen that expressions are essentially the same use the same building blocks as poses so we can use single click expressions that will just get loaded on our character much like we have single click poses that can be loaded we can then go and refine them if we want but mostly expressions are saved not like poses they're often morph dials that we can go and dial in and out with a certain amount of strength with poses this is different because they're either in a pose or they're not in a pose. There's not usually not a slider in that. Even though there is a very cool product by 3D Universe that I'd like to draw your attention to in a little while, which is called the Pose Architect, which also applies the same principle we have in expressions to poses. So another way of posing characters. Let's talk about expressions though. If I wanted to find them in my library, they're much like in poses. If I go and look in my smart content, I can whittle this down to expressions and then I'll find all my products that have expressions related to this. If I stick with this one, the big expressive pack for Genesis 8, I find that's quite nice. There's a lot of expressions in here. So we can go and select our Genesis figure. I'll zoom in on her and then we'll go and try a few out. So this is the annoyed one. Double click and that's her really annoyed. Control Z undoes that. And then we'll try the next one that's astonished or there's attractive or there's blissful or there's cadaverous. And those are one click expressions. They work a little bit like poses. You click on this and there's really only a resting face or there's this expression. There's nothing really in between. Under the hood, often expressions, and I'll just go and undo this until I'm back at my default face. Under the hood, though, these are morph dials and we can find them in the parameters tab. And they're usually in the head section here. If I open that up, I find a whole section that's called expressions. If I open that up, I can see a list of products that I may have installed. So this is a whole product here. This is a whole product. And some don't even have a subsection. So they're just listed as this huge list of expressions here. Like all the ones that are gray, like these ones here, they come with the Genesis figure. And the red ones here, they come with a pack by DAS, like a DAS original. And this is how they work under the hood. If I go and left click and drag, then I can go and dial in this expression. And it's easy because it I can minimize this as well. And much like any other morph dials, I can add expressions on top of one another. Let me just go and bring this over here that we can stay zoomed in. That's quite nice. So I can use concentrate together with board, for example, and then they'll both overlay one another. And I can fiddle with the sliders and see which combination is my, my favorite one. And much like I've shown you before, I can also go and make any of these my favorites by just clicking on that little heart icon here. as Desire HD. And often these kind of work together in combination, but they also work with something else, which is called the Vizemes. And they are, some people call them Vizemes. I, I'm, I'm thinking Vizemes kind of sounds better, but I really don't know what the correct pronunciation is. So the seams are the mouth shapes that characters make when they speak certain vowels or characters. So A, E, E, O, U, those are all the seams. So th, k, t. We make these specific mouth movements and our characters can mimic those as well. They're under another section down here at the bottom, which was the seams. And these are all the letters that the character could potentially speak. So she could say ah, because she could make an expression as well as say something. Or there's the double E, that's kind of an E, or there's eh. So we make, you know, we make mouth movements depending on that. And I find that blending these things together with an expression often works really well. The one thing that the Vasims don't seem to do well is that for my personal taste, they're not exaggerated enough. So they're very subtle. Often what we need is not just, we, we don't, if I say, if I, if I go to my doctor and I say, ah, I don't just say, ah, I'll just say, ah, I really open my mouth 
and my character currently doesn't do that. So this is where we need to use another one of those tricks and say, hey, let's get rid of the limits or increase the limit by something that makes more sense. So like in this case, I'm going to go to that little parameter settings and instead of a maximum value of 100%, I'll say, let's say 500%. So I'll leave the limit in place, but my slider now goes much higher. And there comes a point where that looks terrible and it's up to us to make a note of that. So maybe like, I don't want to go over say 300%, but this is more like an R that I like. So this is kind of, you know, it looks more like from an alien movie you now. So I'm going to go and go and reduce that to 300 maybe. And then when I save my scene, this slider will have that new default value. So if I wanted to have something that suggests surprise, I might go and look for that here surprise surprise hd there's that she's that's that's very surprised but maybe on top of that i also want her to say something so i can then go into my vaccines and then say you know dial in a vaccine and then that exaggerates that and kind of overlays that and that's like a really shocked face now yeah, so the seams on top of expressions, that's a good idea. And then also to have a look at what is currently dialed in, we can use our currently used slider. And then I can say, ah, so I've used the surprised expression here. I didn't quite know which one I used. Maybe one of them needs to be dialed down. And that's how I can use the same principle as I've shown you about sliders with custom characters. So endless hours of fun trying to find the right expression. Note that not every expression is <laughs> available. And some of these are just fantastic, really. Some of these are not sliders. So if I do have a slider and I may, I'm, I'm thinking sarcastic is nice, but I want to tone it down. I can just go and make the slider less and blend a few together until I find my dream expression. But if I had something like this and I'm thinking I'd like to go from a resting position into that, then it's very difficult to blend multiple sliders into a position of multiple other sliders together. And that's where a little handy tool named puppeteer comes in because it lets us do this. It's almost like an animation blend space that doesn't have the timeline. It sounds very cryptic when I when I say it like that, but let me go and reset all of these things so that we have a resting position and show you puppeteer in action because especially for expressions, it comes in handy, but it's also an invaluable tool for anything else like, you know, custom character building or pose building or literally animating your characters or moving a character's head while having the eyes follow and puppeteer can do it all. It's, it's just so good for me. It's intricately linked to expressions, which is why I was thinking I'll bring it up here. It has its own tab. So let's bring that up either under window or we can just go to this empty space here and right click there and say add tab here and go find it under something called puppeteer and then it'll dock itself right here on the side this is a gray kind of scary space it has layers as well so i can animate multiple parts of my character and it's literally like an animation that we have to think about it it has these three modes here at the top edit preview and record we won't be dealing with the last one only with edit and preview Currently, I'm in edit mode, and that's when I can set points anywhere on this space here. And I will do that just here. I'll left click and just, just left click, and that'll create that little yellow spot here. It will essentially set a keyframe of anything and everything about my character in this position at this time. If I now go and find my perfect expression, like, you know, say <laughs> rage and pleased, and pain, that's really not a good that's really not a good expression. But maybe it is if I just tone it down a little bit. I'll just show you the principle. I go and click here into the space so that I have another dot. And I can now go and interpolate between these two dots in preview mode. So if I do that, set preview, and then left click and drag anywhere in this space, then I can see that my expression and all the sliders that I have set slowly and gradually blend from one position into the next. If I go over, there's even a point of exaggeration. So it doesn't look, it doesn't look great, but you can see the power behind this because it doesn't just work with expression. It works with anything and everything that you can dial in, which is super exciting. And there lies a lot of power in Das Studio that I haven't seen in other 3D applications. This game engines know this as a blend space. And it also allows you to set other things. Now, if you had, if I go and go back to edit, 
reset all these and maybe go back to one of my expressions that can't be dialed in like these ones. They're one click. So if I go and double click astonished, then this is now going to go and load that in. If I go and in edit mode, set another point here, I can go and interpolate between nothing and that but it now does it gradually. And if I didn't know where that slider was, this is, this is actually how I can do it. I can use this to make figures speak. If I go and put my vicines on another layer and on another outside, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. You can also blend a couple of things together. So if I had my super painful, terrible expression here and I wanted to go into this realm, I can go halfway. So that is also possible with Puppeteer. And I encourage you to play around with it. I think for expressions particularly, as well as poses, this is an absolutely amazing tool. Let's try another one, just going with this one here and hit edit. If I'm thinking this is okay, but it's a little bit too much, I can just go and set a point here, go back to preview and say, well, this was nothing. This was that expression 100%. And if I wanted to have that 50%, I could just go and put it here. Or I could just go blend it in with something else. So that is really nice. I can have as many points as I like. Just from experience, I can tell you that it's usually a good idea to have a resting position in the middle so that you can go out from there and build yourself a little ring around this. I don't want to make it too much about Puppeteer. Just know that you can create a second circle like at the bottom here and then have another resting position. So I could go from here to an expression, back to resting thing. So I can literally have as many points points as I like and I can go and just keep putting them out there. This might be blissful. Whoops. Has to happen in edit mode. Sorry. If something like this happens and you want to reset your figure, you can just go and click on one of these points in edit mode that you've already set and then that pose will be loaded in like that. Might take a while, but it will work. Yeah, that's a nice idea. We'll just put this here, go back into preview mode, and then we can literally go from here over to here, over to here, and then back to here. And as you move your mouse, you can literally go and make your figure do all kinds of things in real time, which is just amazing. And just as an aside, just to flesh out this little tour of puppeteer, if you were to set this to record, your timeline at the bottom would record all these expressions as you move your mouse. So very, very clever, very helpful. In my next video, I want to introduce you to a product called Face Controls that can make even better expressions with something known as a faceplate. It's a slightly different way of building expressions and it's an important tool to know about. Stay tuned for that.